good morning to you, sir. Uh, you have said that you had reasonably productive conversations with Ford yesterday. Does that mean they're going to put a more generous offer on the table? Uh, good morning. Thanks for having us. And, uh, you know, that's up to them. Uh, that's, you know, the reason we're in this situation right now is because all three of the big three companies chose to wait. They chose not to negotiate for the eight weeks we had. We started this back in July, and we told them then, don't wait till the last minute or you're going to find yourself in a bad position. And, unfortunately, they chose to wait till the last week to get down and start talking to get serious about this, and that's where we are now. And, uh, if we don't get better offers and we don't get down and take care of the members' needs, then uh, we're going to amp this thing up even more. Well, you said progress is slow. Uh, will you order strikes at additional plants this week? Are you preparing for that? Uh, we're prepared to do whatever we have to do. So the membership is ready. The membership is fed up. We're fed up with falling behind. It's been decades of falling behind, and, 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 and especially this past decade, in the the most wealthiest times in the history of these companies. There is no excuse. These companies have made a quarter of a trillion dollars in the last 10 years, $21 billion in the last six months alone. And our workers' wages and, and, and conditions have went backwards. You're asking for 36% pay raises, our reporter just laid out there. Stellantis said they've offered 21%. What are you expecting out of tomorrow's negotiation with them? That seems forward movement. We've, we've asked for 40% pay increases, and the reason we asked for 40% pay increases is because in the last four years alone, the CEO pay went up 40%. They're already millionaires. Right. You know, it, it's shameful that uh, you know, one, of the, one of the leaders of the corp, one of the corporations sitting in his second home in Acapulco while we're bargaining rather than being at the bargaining table. And so you know, our demands are just. We're asking for our fair share in this economy and the fruits of our labor. So 21% is a no-go for you? It's definitely a no-go, and we've made that very clear to the companies. Uh, Ford's CEO said last November that electric vehicles are going to require 40 percent less labor to produce than combustion vehicles. I know it may not be the intention, but I wonder how you think this transition to electric vehicles may be eating away at your union strength. Well, I don't believe it's eating away at our union strength. Um, it, it is the way it is right now. Unfortunately, uh, this, is, this is what's wrong with our economy, and this is what's wrong with America right now. The billionaire class keeps taking more and more, and the working class keeps getting left behind. And the unfortunate part in this transition right now, like always, go back to the, go back to the Great Recession. The banks got bailed out by our taxpayer dollars, and they just kept on doing what they do while working class people's homes got foreclosed on. Automakers got bailed you go out back too. back to the, you know, <clears throat> yes, automakers and got bailed out. And taxpayers lost again, money on that. The workers, were unfairly, the, the workers were unfairly blamed for everything that was wrong with those companies. It was bad, bad decisions on the parts of the companies that put us in that position. And the sad reality is, you know, the workers paid the price for that. We made all the, all the, all the sacrifices. And after a decade of massive profits, Yep. The workers have went backwards. Our wages have went backwards. Our benefits have went backwards. The majority of our members have zero retirement security now. 